This is Pulse 95. Pulse 95. It's the Morning Majulus. It's the Morning Majulus. Talking the stories that are shaping headlines, plus those that make you go, hmm. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Welcome back to the Morning Majlis, talking the stories that are shaping the headlines. It's me, Ahmed Dawood, with Rania Saadi, and uh, we have a lot to get to this morning. A pretty big business story as well. Xbox owner Microsoft has acquired a major game company behind a number of blockbuster titles, a deal that is worth billions of dollars. So we'll talk about the massive impact this is set to have on the tech sector around the world and its competition as well with the upcoming PlayStation 5, uh, plus many more discussions to be had, Rania. Yeah, we're going to do a wrap-up of the 72nd Primetime Emmy Awards that happened last night. Yesterday, history has been made as one particular actress has earned a title of being the youngest woman to ever win Best Actress in a Drama Series at the Emmys. So we will reveal who that winner is. And also we'll go through the full list of the winners in case you didn't catch it. And also the highlights of the night. Yeah, it's going to be a, a pretty interesting one. I always love uh, recapping these award shows and discussing about the choices they've made, who won, who deserved to win. So stay tuned for that and uh, join the conversation, 4215. If you've seen the Emmys, if you've got any hot takes, so to speak, uh, the text lines are open, 4215. Well, we've got a pretty alarming development because somewhere around the world, hundreds of whales have been washing up on the shores. They are stranded and they're dying by the minute. So what is happening? Why is this happening? And uh, what, why? I mean, is it is it climate change? Is it human-related activity? Stay tuned as we discuss that and so much more. Yeah, and a new field hospital dedicated to COVID-19 patients is opening up here in the region that should accommodate hundreds of patients. Where is that at? We will reveal that as well in a couple of minutes. That's right. Uh, so stay tuned to Pulse 95. Big developments discussed on the Morning Majlis and we're live on YouTube. Pulse 95 Radio on the search bar is where you could find us. The Morning Majlis, talking the stories that are shaping headlines. This is, this is Pulse 95. Yes, definitely a big story that's coming out from Oman. The Ministry of Health is all set to launch the first phase of COVID-19 field hospital by the end of this month in cooperation with the private sector. Now, the field hospital at Old Muscat Airport premises is equipped with all the necessary COVID-19 treatment facilities amid rising positive cases and deaths, sadly. And that is according to Dr. Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Saidi, Minister of Health of Oman, during the Supreme Committee media briefing last week. This was announced. Now, the field hospital will help to ease pressure on hospitals. So they continue to provide services to non-COVID-19 um, patients. The facility is likely to have a capacity of between 200 to 300 beds, approximately. It will um, treat patients who do not require intensive care. Now, the hospital building plan has been assigned to an engineering company, while a medical team is currently working on completing the proposed project. Uh, the building is ideal as it has easy exits and entry via the bridge opposite the building. It is also better suited to receive the patients even from other governors as well. Yeah, Oman is on high alert uh, amid this rise in COVID-19 cases. The Ministry of Health in the country said that they are expected to vaccinate some staff by the end of this year, particularly frontline workers in the medical field and a number of police and army members. And uh, with cases rising, the authorities are also issuing warnings that they would close shops and restaurants that break safety regulations as they step up strict measures to contain the spread of COVID-19 in the country. Yeah, the Minister of Health did urge uh, citizens uh, and residents to follow social distancing, wear masks, use sanitizers, and also stay at home if they have any symptoms of the COVID-19. The Supreme Committee also continues to urge the public and private institutions that employees at workplace should not exceed 70%. We're talking about Oman here, right? Yes. Uh, and to conduct temperature checks 
provide spacing between employees as well as also to ensure adherence to wearing masks and provide sanitizer. Just in case people just tuning in, they're thinking 70% in the UAE. No, it, this is in Oman. <laughs> it's, a, it's in Oman. Yeah. And uh, this is a particularly sensitive time as well because the flu season is approaching. Yeah. And it's got a lot of people asking a million questions about the differences and similarities between influenza and COVID-19, which despite having varying signs and symptoms, do operate similarly in the way they spread and the way symptoms present themselves at least uh, visually. Uh, but uh, yes, that's one thing to be mindful of. It's one thing to keep tracking as well. And uh, another reason to be mindful of your surroundings, where you are, and being honest with yourselves, uh, should you display any symptoms, for instance, knowing what to do in that situation, staying home, should you feel concerned about it, is another important aspect to the story as well. So. Uh, this is something we're going to continue talking about what countries are doing to prevent a spike in COVID-19 cases. But this is a particularly sensitive time uh, for countries in the GCC and the United Arab Emirates as we're seeing uh, mm -hmm. the cases uh, go up and down day by day. Uh, and the authorities have been doing their utmost here to stop this from happening. Absolutely. The authorities um, have been closing actually centers here in the United Arab Emirates for those who are breaching COVID-19 safety measures. Um, fines are being issued left and right to outlets in several shopping centers, for example, for not adhering to physical distancing guidelines and employees' lack of commitment to wearing uh, face masks. And this is because public health is definitely a top priority and stern action will be taken against any non-compliance with the precautionary measures found during inspections or that may be brought um, to its attention by consumers and the public. That is what the authorities have been saying and warning uh, everyone because they are very serious about this. Very serious indeed. And recently, a man in Sharjah who broke the mandatory quarantine was also arrested. Uh, people uh, or the police are fining thousands of people across the country for violating the coronavirus uh, guidelines. So it is important to be mindful of that, to not flout rules on face masks and maintaining a physical distance of two meters and being aware of your surroundings to not enter any crowded premises and uh, have that awareness going on because even though they, these places that violate COVID-19 rules, you might see them open now, they will be curbed on as the authorities are taking extreme measures here to ensure the safety of the public. Absolutely. Authorities have stepped up efforts in recent weeks, especially we've noticed yes, that absolutely. to ensure everyone is following COVID-19 safety measures. Uh, inspectors are everywhere. They're visiting shopping centers, pharmacies, gyms, money exchanges, beauty salons. Residence buildings, too. Resident buildings, yeah. yeah. So got to be careful. Absolutely. Follow the rules. Follow them rules. Uh, and uh, we're going to be continuing to discuss uh, COVID-19 measures and its impact on the country as well throughout the program. But up next, we've got a pretty uh, startling development here. Hundreds of whales washed up on a shore somewhere. How did this happen? Why is it happening? And what are people doing about it? Stay tuned for that discussion and so much more on The Morning Majlis. Off 95. The Morning Majlis. Talking the stories that are shaping headlines. This is, this is Pulse 95. Hello, welcome back on to the Morning Majlis. And we're talking tech, well, in what is said to be one of the largest ever acquisitions in the video game industry. Microsoft announced yesterday that it has reached a deal to acquire ZeniMax Media, the parent company of popular video game publisher Bethesda Softworks, for a whopping $7.5 billion. Now, once this deal is finalized, Bethesda properties, including The Elder Scrolls, Fallout, uh, Quake, Starfield and Doom will be owned by Microsoft. The series will be added to the Xbox Game Pass, which is a subscription-based cloud gaming service, uh, which has topped 15 million subscribers so far. And this Bethesda deal is expected to be finalized in the second half of fiscal year of 2021. Yes, indeed. And uh, the games company Bethesda is a major major part of the video game industry today. We're talking major uh, video game titles that are released by this particular company. 
And uh, to get into why this is important, you have to understand what Game Pass is. So Microsoft Game Pass, you could think of it as Netflix for video games. And you could stream those video games on a number of different devices. So you could, for instance, play games like uh, Doom or Fallout on your mobile phone or device or PC or Xbox. doesn't matter what device you're using because it uses streaming technology. So your device doesn't have to have the cutting edge specs. You just need a fast internet connection to play those games. Okay. And uh, what they're doing with this is they're adding the library of Bethesda games to their catalog. And uh, it makes it very tempting because all you have to do is essentially pay $10 a month and you get access to all of these video games. And it sets the pace as well for their strategy moving forward as they compete with the PlayStation 4. They're not taking that exclusive route where they acquiring video game studios to only publish video games on a specific platform like the Xbox console. No, they are going into making this as accessible for people as possible via cloud gaming and streaming as well and trying to make as much money doing that. Now, as part of the announcement, they said they have 15 million Game Pass subscribers so far at an average of $10 per users. So uh, uh, this uh, announcement is set to expand that even further. Yeah, and uh, according to a statement from Bethesda's uh, senior vice president of PR marketing, he's saying that we're still Bethesda. We're still working on the same games we were yesterday, made by the same studios we've worked with for years. And those games will be published by us and us only. And this deal just allows us to make even better games going forward. And Microsoft obviously is an incredible partner and offers access to resources that will make us a better publisher and developer. But it's funny that this announcement actually comes a day before pre-orders of its new Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S consoles go live. Microsoft's competitor Sony started accepting pre-orders just last week for its PlayStation 5, as we know. Yeah, and uh, it's very clear here that the two video game console makers, Microsoft and Sony, are taking entirely different approaches on tackling this video game market, which has seen a spike in demand amid COVID-19 as more people stayed home and ramped up their purchases of tech products, particularly video games, to pass time. So what PlayStation is doing is relying on exclusive video games. They're selling you on this hardware, the PlayStation 5. They're saying buy the PlayStation 5 and you can play a number of games that you cannot play elsewhere. You can't find those games on the PC. You can't find those games on the Xbox. You gotta buy our console. Xbox, on the other hand, is taking an entirely different approach. They are going all in on the concept of cloud gaming, streaming your video games on the go on any device. They've even recently pledged to make Game Pass available on iPhone devices. So no matter what device you own, you'll have an access to a wide catalog of video games. The console itself is a piece of hardware, an advanced piece of hardware, uh, that is one way, one of many ways, to access their cloud gaming and Game Pass service as well. So they're not so much honing in on, here's one specific device where you could play a number of exclusive games that are only for that device. No, they are betting on cloud gaming as a future and essentially Netflix for video games, making it available on a wide range of devices. And the move to acquire uh, uh, Bethesda for $7.5 billion plays into that because it makes more uh, next-gen games available on their uh, Game Pass service. So instead of buying, say, the latest Bethesda game on your PlayStation 4 for $60, you can get it on your Game Pass Uh, for whatever amount you subscribe for and the entire catalog as well. So they're not so much focusing on exclusivity. And those Bethesda games are not going to be taken away from the PlayStation uh, 5. They'll still be there. But uh, essentially, Microsoft is is betting on its Game Pass. And uh, we'll see how that one turns out. Yeah, and actually Bethesda's uh, executive producer is saying that selling $60 of copies of the games on other platforms while offering the same games with a $10 monthly Xbox Game Pass membership would definitely create demand. It would. It would. 
It is a smart move, and uh, we're seeing the future of video games change as well. We might even go from the model of, hey, I have a CD and I have it for the rest of my life, right. or I bought a game for $60 and it's in my library. We might transition from that to the Netflix model where I have a subscription, bam, I have access to all of these games. Right. So what Microsoft is doing with its new consoles is going to be a test and an experiment on that model, and it'll be interesting to see how that changes the way uh, that people consume that type of media. Uh, stay tuned to Pulse 95 because up next, we're going to be talking about what is happening on the Emmys. And someone, Rania, has been making history, they say. Making history. The youngest to ever win a title at the Emmys. Who is that? Who is that? And who won as well? Yeah. Uh, no, a couple of big TV shows have been making the rounds. Uh, so yeah. stay tuned as we discuss all of that. But ahead of that discussion, text us at 4215. Let us know your thoughts on the Emmys. If you had uh, been following those developments, if you think your favorite show deserved to win or did not win, let us know. Text lines are open. 4215. Entertainment headlines. Entertainment headlines. Entertainment headlines. This is. This is. The buzz. This is the buzz, and we're talking buzz. about the 72nd Primetime Emmy Awards that happened Sunday night in the States, in LA, Staples Center in particular. And yesterday, history has been made as one particular actress has earned the title of being the youngest woman to ever win Best Actress in a Drama Series at the Emmys. And that just is none other than Zendaya for Euphoria. Yeah, and uh, she was up against some pretty stacked competition. And mm -hmm. she was up against Killing Eve's Jodie Comer and Sandra O, oh, Laura Linney from the show Ozark, Olivia Coleman from The Crown, and Jennifer Aniston from The Morning Show. Oh, Yet uh, the 24 year old. I love The Morning Show. The Morning Show is great. Yeah. That's Ronnie's reminds... favorite. It's my favorite. Reminds you of us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly show. it. That's exactly it. And I love Jennifer Aniston. So, anyway. God bless. Uh, but God well, bless Zendaya. God bless. God, mm. God bless everybody. Uh, <laughs> but Zendaya, who is a former Disney star, she's just 24 years old. Yeah. And expressed great shock after winning the award. She was surrounded by her family in the living room. That's another charming aspect to this award ceremony. Instead of having them seated in the front rows wearing tuxedos and fancy dresses, they were in the living rooms, surrounded by friends and loved ones. And the moment she won the Emmy, she screamed in joy, her family behind her dancing, cheering, celebrating out there. And uh, in her speech, uh, she, said, she said, I know this feels like a really weird time to be celebrating, but I just want to say there is hope in the young people out there. I know that our TV show doesn't always feel like a great example of that, but there is hope in our young people. And I just want to say to all my peers out there doing the work in the streets, I see you, I admire you, I thank you. That's incredible. Well, besides Zendaya's big win and big night and her making history, I'm just going to make it short. Three shows, um, they made history as well. And they happened to be Watchmen, Schitt's Creek, and Succession. They dominated the virtual Emmys on Sunday night. Watchmen won Best Limited Series at the Emmys, marking the first time a comic book adaptation has taken home a top prize at the annual celebration of television's best work. Now, of course, and also a year after Fleabag dominated the, cam the, the comedy awards last year, a single program, Schitt's Creek, a Canadian production which found a second life and a passionate fan base on Netflix, also swept the genre this year. And also, as widely predicted, Succession, the sharply written and brutally funny HBO drama, also racked up the Drama Awards, winning Best Writing, Directing, Best Actor for Jeremy Strong, and also Best Series. It's fascinating the way that uh, TV has evolved over the years. It feels like such a refined art form at the moment, and yeah. uh, there's no shortage of options there when you're on those streaming platforms like Netflix. Uh, but it, it feels like we're shifting away from this big emphasis on movies and blockbusters to watching TV series on Netflix that unfold like novels, and they're so sophisticated and intricate. And uh, the quality of shows here, the caliber of them, and the Emmy Awards. I mean, I'm looking at the list of nominees, and I, too, I, yeah. I wouldn't know which one to, to deserves it, so to speak. I feel like the morning show deserves it, but they, I mean, I'm so sad. They didn't get anything. <laughs> it's had a couple except, wins. Except for, so, I think, supporting actor. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. 
Billy Crudup got the morning show of sporting actor. He's the winner for the sporting actor in, in a drama series. Yeah. But was that it for the morning measure? Uh, for the morning measure. Morning oh, measures, there you the go. The morning show. See, a that's Freudian my inner brain. There. That's me thinking <laughs> it's the morning measures. That's right. Uh, but <laughs> this, despite the stacked odds and the amazing shows that featured in the Emmys, uh, yeah. it was, uh, let's say we, it went without a hitch as far as the ratings are concerned. Uh, the show, in fact, featured a 14% drop in viewership Compared to last year's event, it drew only 5.1 million total viewers. It was hosted by Jimmy Kimmel in an empty Staples Center in Los Angeles, with the majority of nominees waiting in their living rooms to hear if they had won. Uh, but despite the low figures here, the show itself went in a seamless fashion, considering all the hurdles the broadcast had to go through due to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, but they did have... Um, they shipped 130 camera and lighting kits to nominees across the world to make this happen. Uh, and they also had to follow a number of social distancing guidelines. So you could say logistically it was incredibly tough to make. The fact that it went on in the first place is quite miraculous due to travel restrictions. Uh, and all in all, a smooth show. But yes, uh, figures have dropped uh, to an all-time low as more and more people lose interest in watching these shows in the first place. That's so true. I feel the same way as well. But uh, staying here on the bright side, let's just congratulate all the winners. Let's Absolutely. congratulate Mark Ruffalo for his outstanding lead actor role because he won for that in a, um, uh, for his role in I Know This Much Is True. Uh, also, congratulations to Regina King for winning Outstanding Lead Actress in a Limited Series for Watchmen. Uh, and let's congratulate Zendaya again as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because she's the youngest. So, yeah. Text us at 4215. Let us know what you think of the winners and nominees of the Emmys. Did your show make the cut? 4215 is the text line. And on that note, Rania... It's a wrap for us. That's we right. We gave you a wrap up of the Emmys, but it's a wrap <laughs> for us as well. We're going to have to head off, but we will meet again tomorrow morning, bright and early from 7 to 10. You can catch us on YouTube live. Just type in Pulse 95 Radio on YouTube search bar and look for the morning medjlis. We will be uploading highlights of the show, today's show and every day's show. And also, if you didn't get a chance to catch us live or if you... You know, you don't have time to go on YouTube. You can still listen to us on our audio podcasts on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. Just type in Morning Majlis and listen to our conversations that we had today and every day. Absolutely. Uh, thank you all for listening and tuning into the program, for joining us on the text lines as well. Stay tuned to Pulse 95. Stay safe and stay healthy. Pulse 95. Pulse 95. Pulse 95. It's Pulse 95.